Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, today's theme is what's keeping you awake at night. So I've noticed a pattern in my sleeping. Uh, it's been very disturbed last night. I just couldn't get to sleep at all. So I'm a little bit tired this morning and actually I feel quite anxious, uh, a bit in my head. So I thought let's do a reading. A bit like a pick a pie or we can do it a bit like that. Uh, it was like Let's have a look at some different scenarios of maybe why uh, you are being kept awake at night. Um, restless energy. Um, I said that I noticed a bit of a pattern. Now our clocks went back on early hours Sunday morning. And since then my uh, sleeping pattern has been really disturbed. So let's have a look into what's keeping you awake at night. Or why are you being kept awake at night? Let's go to the Oracle of Shadows and Light. Are we going to be doing a pick a pile? We can do. Okay, let me pull some cards. So, I'm feeling like four piles. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's like whose bedroom door are we going through? We shall have a look at the cards. Okay, card number one. Card number two. Card number three. Card number four. Okay, here's your cards. I'm not examining them yet. I shall leave you to have a look at the cards. And I shall tell you what my day at a glance is. Uh, that's just popped up six minutes ago. Go easy on yourself. So you can choose a pile. These are going to be our uh, scenarios. One, two, three, four. Let me pull some cards um, and let's build a pile for each of these uh, these options. Okay, we'll keep that book out. So what do we have here? Card number 36, pile number one, mend a broken heart fairy. Pile number two, card number three, the sea beacon fairy. Pile number three, card number 20, fairy of the highlands. And then pile number four, card number 15, the mildew fairy. Okay, I think that's enough. We should pull some tarot and um, see what the tarot would like to say. But I believe that's enough for the oracles. Okay, there's three oracle messages here. Poll number one. Poll number two. Poll number three. Poll number four. Okay, let's bring you back. So if you've chosen pile number one, you've chosen the Mend a Broken Heart Fairy. You're healing from heartache. Okay. 
So you're feeling that an absence here. Lonely. It actually feels like your heart's breaking. Even though there's a, a, a bandage, a plaster, that's over this heart here, I still feel... Sorry, darling, could you not get in? Okay, um, that could be the energy of actually blocking off your heart. So your heart's broken and you're blocking off your heart. Let's get some um, tarot cards here. Instead of you going grey, you're kind of going dark. So I, I feel there's dark thoughts here at night. It feels like sadness and sorrow for yourself. Your heart's broken. You're trying to mend it and to get over this. Um, but because her hair's got like streaks of black, I noticed that in my video yesterday. I thought, I look like I've got more streaks of black today. So, um, rather than the grey. You're going grey, you're going dark, you're going black. Which takes me to kind of revisiting, going back to having a look. It, it feels the energy of going back to have a look at, at your heartache rather than avoiding it. You're allowing the tears to flow. Let's get some tarot cards. We should go to the Druid Craft Tarot. So the question was, why are you being kept awake at night? Or what is keeping you awake at night? There's a rebirth here. So there's definitely this revisitation, uh, which it's like you're not wanting yeah, to go towards. Oh, I can't think. Oh. Let me show you these cards. Okay, conflict here. The closing off of your heart here is an indication uh, of your masculine. It's a very masculine trait to shut down their emotions and close themselves off. But there's inner conflict here. Interesting, it's pointing out like the cock, the cock rule. The cock rules. So it's very, it's kind of an anti-masculine energy here. The energy here is rather than kind of focusing on the pain, focus on how we can change, all of us can change, because I actually feel there's a masculine here behind the scenes that is changing. There's a rebirth here. But it's like this rebirth can't come all the time that you're closing yourself off to it. There's a kind of bitterness here to this energy and a resentment towards the masculines. But they have this inner turmoil here that you're not really recognising. Okay. <clears throat> a very stubborn energy here. This is um, where you've put up your barriers, your walls, your guards. Your guards, you're on guard. Okay. This was so painful that this you can never allow this to happen again. Now the next energy is actually the Divine Feminine's energy. It's like you're hiding behind a branch, but there's no leaves on it. Now, the Divine Feminine energy here is angelic. She's understanding. In a way, this is kind of saying to ignore uh, the masculine's behaviour. It's okay to cry. It's okay to break down and to feel the pain. It wants to be felt. And there you are. So, like, I feel there's a big cover-up job 
going on here. And then undercover, under the covers, it's torture. And we have a masculine here who's also, but I feel like at night time he's working on this. He's in a different energy to you. He's getting through this kind of conflict and it's like you're literally sitting in it, laying in it. All I can hear is that's the spirit. It's about you having um, spirit within you. If you don't have spirit within you, then you're going to be very unsettled. This is about allowing spirit to comfort you. Let's read the Mend a Broken Heart Fairy first before I have a look at these oracle cards. Card number 36. Now that brings you to a nine when you add those two numbers together. And that always takes me to like having spiritual support around you. And uh, the need for you to place yourself inside this spiritual container at night time. And allow yourself to be comforted and loved. Card number 36. So the message is healing from heartache. Here she comes to gather up your heart sore pieces and place a sweet bandage on the place that is most wounded. And this one tender gesture does more to heal you than could a thousand years of therapy. It's time for small kindnesses to be received, for you to know that the little gifts of friendship and sweetness are the ones that will assist you most at this time. Allow yourself to be treated gently, to be attended to with kindness and to be hugged. Allow yourself to accept that this is a time when you need to take good care of yourself. You are healing and on the mend, but do not undo her medicine by forcing yourself to hurry up and get over it. The Mend a Broken Heart Fairy speaks, you have been hurt and this heart feels bruised to me. It may have been what is called a lover's quarrel or unrequited love. It may have been a breakup, and it may be that an adventure in love has turned harsh. But I'm here to help you mend, and I will not let your broken heart bleed. I will wash, clear, heal, balance, and place the bandage over the wound, protect, and send you the healing that means deep, restful sleep, and peace return to you. I want you to take it easy on the path of love for now. Soon you will feel your vitality return, but for now, it is a time of rest. The divination message. When you have heartache, it is important to treat yourself well. Take time away from the flurry of shoulds you are so often confronted with. Why not take some time to snuggle on the couch with a favourite old movie and have a sniffle? Have a long comforting bath and be sure to make a promise to yourself to let close people who are worthy of your love, or to let close people who are worthy of your love. It is not about being bitter or guarded, but you are a sensitive and tender sweet being and some people are just not. So now is not the time for harshness, soft blankets, sweet dreams, long baths and a reduction of the harsh energy around you are best. Then the Mender Broken Heart Fairy can fly in to soothe you. You will feel her presence and she will lift the pain until all that is left is sweet, gentle wisdom. So that makes complete sense with this reading here. Okay. Let's have a look at your Archangel animal. We've got the turtle. Be joyful and trust him. Now I'm actually feeling the masculine energy coming through here. Be joyful and trust him. The turtle. Turtle power. <laughs> Teenage mutant. Are they hero turtles or ninja turtles? I'm not sure which energy they're in today. Are you a ninja or a hero? I need a hero! Okay. 
I'm holding out for a hero to the end of the night. Turtle, you're looking for a hero? Oh, number one. Can we get to the turtle, please? Let's look at the guidance. Choosing this card suggests you may sometimes put your shell around you to protect your sensitive feelings. This also, <clears throat> this also prevents the good from coming in. Your guidance is to let this wall down and place light around yourself instead. Through the turtles, through the turtles, tune in. It doesn't kind of flow right or make sense, but hey, let's just carry on. Through the turtles, oh, I think we need a little comma there. Let's <laughs> Lucy just read it. Through the turtles, tune in to Jumbe and focus on abundance consciousness. You can call in love, prosperity, happiness, joy and all manner of good things. But be sure to visualise others and the whole planet receiving this stream of bounty with you. So the heart's been kind of closed off. Um, I feel very much to the masculine energy. But it's more about the feminine compassion here. And allowing your emotions to flow. You're healing. My belly's rumbling. Trust that the universe loves you and that everything will work out for the highest good. The rich and generous universe is ready to bring you plenty, so value who you truly are. And if you wish to sacrifice yourself for the majority, do so consciously. Let's look at the uh, romance angels here. Let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others and they're all feminines here. So I feel like this very much is for uh, the divine feminines that are healing, are feeling the heartbreak. Or actually it's not the heartbreak, the pain uh, gives you an indication that the divine's working on this, okay? They're mending your heart. So let your friends help you. But this energy here is very much about you allowing the divine to embrace you. To place you in that sacred container. And um, what was the day, day at a glance again? Uh, go easy on yourself. Okay, it's 10 o'clock on the dot. Go easy on yourself, pile one. Let's read, let your friends help you. <clears throat> And take it easy on yourself. The Romance Angels are helping you via other people to the degree that you allow this assistance to occur. This card indicates that you need to be more willing to ask for guidance, especially within the context of your love life. For instance, discuss your feelings, hopes and dreams, then allow others to help you. Perhaps they offer support, give advice or even know of a potential partner among their acquaintances. This card is a signal that you'll benefit from spending quality time with your friends. If you're currently in a relationship, you'll get renewed enthusiasm by having regular outings with good friends. And if you're single, then spending time with these special people will get you out of the house and bring in fresh energy. Your friends may also introduce you to a wonderful romantic partner. <clears throat> Let's leave it there. Okay. Poll number two. The Sea Beacon Fairy, card number three. Guidance, but where will it lead you? Okay, you're having some quite dark dreams. Um, they're like nightmares, I believe. <clears throat> Guidance, but where will it lead you? So it looks quite stormy during the night time for pile number two, if you've chosen this card. 
See Big and Fairy Guidance, but where will it lead you? Okay. Let's pull some tarot cards. Not much more is coming through. Apart from this energy of feeling lost in your dreams. So poll number two, you may actually be sleeping, but not feeling as if you have slept, like you've been on a voyage, somewhere dark. Yeah, where have you been? You've been to another dimension. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting. This is an interesting energy for you, poll number two, because you're on some kind of voyage, and... Um, it's like you're collecting in the harvest. Where do you do you keep revisiting this place? Okay, I feel like you are like time traveling, dimension hopping. She has her light here, and I was drawn to this light, and I couldn't make sense of why are you showing me this. I can see now because it's highlighting what's this here. You've got the world card here. Okay, so going through portals here. Now, what was interesting is now we've got the bear coming out of the case. So straight away I was taken to, is this like Mars? What's life on Mars like? Dark. Who lives on Mars? The masculines. So it's like you've travelled from Venus to Mars. You've ventured there. Now, again, it's being highlighted by a star. Where the location is. So I feel like you're actually communicating with the masculines as a collective. You're trying to um, help them with their challenges. But you are busy. <laughs> There's their visions. Okay. You will reap the fruits of your labour. This is, it's hard work. It feels like it's hard work. You're tired, maybe can't understand why you're tired, but it's because you're not actually sleeping. You're astral travelling. Ten of Cups, and I feel that this is the guidance that you're giving to the masculines. Look at all these pots here. So it's like different lessons. You might be halfway through because you've got the Five of Wands, the Ten of Cups, ten lessons maybe. You're halfway through, but it's like every time you come back, I don't know. It's like you bring a piece of them with you. Oh my goodness, it took me to kind of like. A nightmare on Elm Street, okay? <laughs> Pulling them out of the dream. But I feel like she's gobbled up. Is it Mars in there? She's had too many Mars bars. So there is something like with the bars. So say Mars being a kind of prison. And she's helping to... Um, take away the bars. She's trying to lighten up Mars. <laughs> Shall we read this card? Guidance, but where will it lead you? It's like um, you're having to, in a way, show these masculines, step by step, how to come out of themselves, how to come out of their shell. It doesn't give me an option to decline it, so I'll just let it ring. <laughs> and um, that come in probably perfectly with a march into the beat of your own drum. Okay. <clears throat> mother, mother, mother in. <laughs> it's a very mothering energy 
Mother in Sunday was coming through. So whether there's a particular day that you can actually really focus with this energy, but it come through the, I don't know, like uh, Mother in Sunday. Okay, let's read this card. <clears throat> um, where's the book? Right there. Card number three. Guidance, but where will it lead you? So sometimes when a clear path seems to be taking you in the right direction, it helps to know who is holding the light up. Because while this beautiful sea beacon fairy is most certainly guiding a lost ship, who knows whether she leads it towards rocks or towards safe harbour. So um, she's helping them to build their trust, to follow the guidance. And this is the choice you have to make now. Is this path that is clearly being lit the right one? Simply because there is light is the source of true and good guide. Would you be best to await another way out of the storm? Or are you so eager to avoid the storm and the challenge that you will follow the first light that comes along? Well, I don't feel that's the case <clears throat> in this situation. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I feel like someone's like calling out across this feminine is calling out to them. It's a bit like the siren call. Um, and the masculines, well, I feel like they've heard about that, the siren call, being lured in by these erotic divine feminines. Who are then going to eat you alive. But um, <clears throat> I think that's what they do, they eat you until you feel alive again. You kind of, um, <clears throat> it's like they feed off of the darkness and transmute that into the light. Okay. Can we carry on? The Sea Beacon Fairy speaks. I do hold up the light, but only you can choose as to whether the, the direction I will lead you in is the right one for you at this time. It may be your salvation I lead you to, and it may be that I am gathering souls and you will perish upon rocks or drown in the cold seas. I know this is hard to bear. It is not a sure thing, this advice and guidance you have received, and for all its insistence that it comes from the light, the advice may not be that which you need to follow at this time. I understand this may be confusing, but I am assuring you mostly of one great truth, that perhaps you must find your own way out at this time. The divination message. A perfect solution to a problem has been presented to you, but whether it is wise to take it is another thing altogether. You may have more resources and opportunities than you are aware of or than you are allowing yourself to believe in. Do not be too quick to follow the first opportunity that comes. Wait and check both your sources and your inner wisdom. There are many paths and many solutions and not all advice will be right for you. There's a real big lesson here that this feminine is teaching the masculines about you need to trust your own inner guidance and your own inner wisdom. Like not even having to listen to the divine feminine, the divine masculines can direct themselves. So in a way, this isn't a frustrating energy because the divine masculine needs to make his own, he needs to find his own way. There is help and guidance there, but when it comes down to it, it's him that has to take the journey. Let's have a look at what your archangel animal is, the snake. Live according to your divine essence. And this is the elemental kingdom. Now normally it would have archangel names here. Um, the last one was archangel jewels. And this says the elemental kingdom. Live according to your divine essence. No one else is your own unique divine essence. Snake. There's a snake in my boots. Wood is round up. Okay. Comes after the sheep. 
You are asked to be very aware today because the snake card is bringing you a message that something is about to happen. Are you ready to burst out of your skin and expand your life? Is it time to plan a holiday or move house? Is an opportunity going to be presented to you? On the other hand, this card may be offering a warning. Can you trust the people around you? Look beyond the surface and listen to your gut instinct. Remember to call on snake magic if you feel you need protection and know that this will keep you safe. Your guidance is to be ready for any eventuality. Tune into the wisdom of the universe that is available to you now. Okay, the romance angels. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. But with the Ten of Cups here, strongly suggests that. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. So it's serious. This is a serious discussions that are going on. <clears throat> you drew this card because of an upcoming wedding, your own or someone else's. And it comes to you because marriage plays a role in the answer to your question. For some people, this card could be a validation that you will get married and asks you to keep the faith and continue enjoying your life without worry about your future marital status. For others, this card signals that you'll meet a significant other at an upcoming wedding or experience something there that will lead to new romance for you. It can also represent your parents' marriage and the way it affected your feelings and beliefs about relationships. I feel that's kind of like another topic that's up for discussion. In a few cases, this card asks you to look at your present and past marriages and review your feelings with the intention of healing your heart and your relationship. Perhaps it's time to enlist a marital counsellor to help you both sort out how you feel. And sometimes this card can signal the end of a marriage, in which case the angels support everyone involved as you come to an understanding about the experience and renew your heart's willingness. To love and it's worth waiting for. There you have it, poll number two. <clears throat> poll number three. Fairview of the Highlands, it's time to be brave. She looks kind of like all teary eyed and um hold. It's time to be brave. She's clutching onto that sword there. Feels like the sword's really heavy. So I feel like there's a heavy burden surrounding this energy. It's okay, it's like you're protected, you're safe, but it is time to be brave. And what happens every time that you're brave, the divine rewards you for your courage every time. Okay, let's have a look at some tarot cards. <clears throat> so are you being kept away because there's something that you're scared of? doing but you know that you have to do it and it's time to be brave I can feel my test my, my test okay so this is a test I can feel my chest tightening okay you need to take a leap of faith I feel like um the energies all kind of have a masculine in the stories. So we have taken a leap of faith here. The dog is taking me to God. Jumping off the cliff. 
The feathers take me to receiving messages from the divine, directly from the divine about what to do. And this person's not afraid. But I'm feeling a masculine energy. This masculine is actually worn out. But he's hiding a pentacle under his chin. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's like he's keeping it safe, hidden. But he wants us to see it. Again, the snow here takes me to the coldness that I can feel. He looks absolutely drained. Okay. So worry. And I felt this feminine have really teary eyes. And so does he. Okay, a bit overwhelming, a little bit. It's overflowing now. You've got the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles. So once this um, outpour happens of emotions, it's very cleansing. So maybe this masculine here needs to have... Uh, a good cry. Maybe you could take advice from pile one. Allowing it out because this is all building up here. <clears throat> He's even got like a little pot I feel here. Like he can, there's something about if you know how many tears this masculine has cried. So I feel like he does cry. Because I feel like they're collected in this pot. So he's cried. He's cried and he's tried and he's tired. But there's the energy of needing to be brave here. It's like following the, the North Star, let's say that. Your guiding star. Let's read this energy, I'm just pulling those cards. Um, let's read this energy of the Fairy of the Highlands. Card number 20. Number 20 is a judgment card in the tarot. And that I felt like this masculine may fear being judged if he was to show his emotions. Okay. It's like he gets, um, I get so emotional, baby, every time I think of you. Ain't it shocking what love can do? About the Fairy of the Highlands. The Fairy of the Highlands does not want to fight. She feels it is not in her nature. She wants to resolve, resolve disputes peacefully. But she will fight if it must come to that. And she is showing you now that you too have the means to stand up for yourself. Even though you have almost chronically avoided conflict and allowed others to take advantage. It is time to take up this sword, step into that part of yourself that knows how to take a stand, speak the truth and not back down when a threat of a conflict looms. It may seem unnatural and wrong and frightening and this little fairy knows it. But it is time and that giving up of what you have worked so hard for in order to avoid conflict or confrontation is no longer right. Take a stand and hold up the sword. The Fairy of the Highlands will be there with you. And when the threat is over, she will help you celebrate your victory. Okay, the Fairy of the Highlands speaks. See this, my sword of power. I have long feared to use it, but now I must grow strong and take it up, as you must too. The thought of welding it, of hurting anything or anyone, makes me sad. But I know what must be done, and I must learn to fight the good fight and stand up for what I believe in. Although I have been told I must not be aggressive, and I feel maybe we could change that to emotional for the masculines, although I, I have been told that I must not be emotional, says aggressive, I feel I must now take up my arms against this trouble and finish it for good. I am going into a battle, and for that I feel sorrow. But I will be fearless and strong and do what needs to be done. I may bathe my sword in tears, but I will no longer hold it back. When the threat that approaches relies on my fear for its victory, I will no longer give away my power so easily. This time, I will take back what is mine. 
<clears throat> the divination message. The time of truth is over. It is time to speak your truth and be strong. People have been taking over your ground, wanting what you have worked hard for without doing the work themselves. They have done so by taking advantage of your peaceful nature. But enough is enough. Sad as it is, it is time to change this. To cut away the cords between you and those who have taken so much. And now you will go into battle. Yes, it is sad. Yes, the Highland Fairy is sad for you. But do not allow sorrow and guilt to neglect self-protection. Honour yourself, raise your swords. Raise your swords, raise your sword and do not back down. What was coming through, um, oh my goodness, it's gone now. That's the second time now I've thought about saying it after I've finished reading. <coughs> and um, um, this is about people um, mistaking your kindness for weakness. <laughs> Okay. I feel like you've allowed yourself to be walked over and it's all a bit too much now. Emotional. Suppressed emotions. At least the depression. Those emotions want to be... They want an outlet. Let's have a look at what your archangel animal is. Uh, the goat. Act from your innate wisdom. Okay. Let's see what the goat energy, what message is being brought through. When you choose this card, your guidance is to be free and independent within the nurture of a loving, caring family or community. If you feel misunderstood, remember that you carry in your aura light and wisdom that are not always recognised. Okay. So remember that you carry in your aura light and wisdom that are not always recognised. Do any mental tasks that come your way graciously, for this is part of life on earth. You are invited to look at the circumstances of your life and challenging situations from a higher perspective. This will bring you much peace and enable your innate qualities of love, loyalty and caring to develop. And when you can do this, your essential wisdom will shine through. Okay. So a very important cleansing process here. You are invited to look at your circumstances of your life and challenging situations from a higher perspective. This will bring you much peace and enable your innate qualities of love, loyalty and caring to develop. When you can do this, your essential wisdom will shine through. You will be acknowledged by those around you. Recognise who you are and many will be drawn to your energy. Okay. And the final card is the Romance Angels. Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. I feel you have so much pent up energy here that wants releasing. And I feel when if it, these emotions are not released then aggression is going to build up. Aggression, a form of depression, angry. Pay attention to the red flags. The Romance Angel sent you this card to help you notice the unhealthy or disconcerting parts of your relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you are swept up in a new romance, this card serves as a cautionary warning. Pay attention to your feelings and impressions with regard to your new suitor. Don't allow emotion to blind you to characteristics or habits that won't work for you in a relationship. A red flag is a sign that something is off. It can include an indication of dishonesty, disrespect, flirtatiousness with others, substance abuse or lack of integrity. While your new love interest may treat you wonderfully well in the beginning of your relationship, it is vital that you watch how he or she treats others. Someone's basic character is revealed by the way in which he and she talks and acts 
with restaurant staff, valet parking attendants and other miscellaneous individuals. If you're in an existing relationship, these red flags may signal a need for an honest mutual discussion or couples counselling. This card doesn't necessarily guide you to leave a relationship. Red flags can be markers along the path of healing. The Romance Angels will guide you to take steps that are healthy for everyone involved. So do follow your intuition. Okay, there's your message, pile number three. Poll number four, the mildew fairy, clean up time. Okay, something's quite stagnant here and uh, mouldy. Something's gone kind of like um, sour. Okay, it's time to, I feel, clean up your life. Fifteen, card of the devil. And it's like, you know that you need to do this, but you're not doing it. So let's have a look at the, uh, the situation. Clean up time. It's time to clean up your life. Five of Swords. Um, again, this masculine kind of, uh, it's very, it's quite strong masculine energy coming through in all the readings. Well, they've got stronger. Okay, there we are. Quite quick message here. Two of Cups, this is a feminine, uh, it's like she has a crystal ball, the masculine knows this, he's mature enough to know that he needs to clear up his life. Clear up his life, clean up his, clean up his act. Okay, so you can see an older version of him here, he's taken the swords away from the younger version and it's like no more self-sabotaging. We've got to grow up. The feminine here is very mature with a crystal ball. This is a cleansing process here that the masculine's going through. It's like he's a, he knows it's time for him to, I felt the water's being very cleansing. The feminine's holding this in. So I feel there'll be a really strong tug from the feminine energy within the masculine. Um, it's like a nesting time. Like before you're about to give birth, you will get busy and kind of get the home ready. Is that energy, but for the masculine. Here's the feminine, watching the masculine, doing whatever he's doing. Um, <clears throat> well, hunting. <coughs> Not sure what he's chasing down here. <clears throat> he's chasing after the rabbit, but... Um, do I want to say cat and mouse, but... It's not, is it? It's a dog and a hen. Okay, what's hair of the dog? A drink in the morning? 15 here, clean up your act. Someone might be drinking here. And they need to kind of cut it out. Okay. The wrong kind of spirit to mess with. Spirit really, it's not that over keen on alcohol. Okay. Um... It kind of numbs you. So let's have a look at this mildew fairy. It's time to clean up your life. 15. So the message is clean up time. About the mildew fairy. Some things just look like they're yuck. But they're not. They're very good things and they can be powerful and helpful when used in the right way. So if the mildew fairy turns up in your reading, it's time to check out what could be profoundly useful for you, which you've dismissed. And this could be an aspect of yourself or an aspect of the environment you're in. It's very important not to try and hide this from yourself or to cover it up. The health of the situation rests upon the degree of openness you approach it with. So the mildew fairy speaks. It always shocks me when people think something shouldn't be there, like me. I grow naturally where it's warm and wet, 
and I love to show you what you may need to take care of. I've got a really tickly throat, excuse me. I love to show you what you may need to take care of. I can do wonderful things. I can be medicine and I can be a parasite too. Um, I'm actually feeling the alcohol coming through here. The alcohol can be medicine. It can be pa a parasite too, depending on your level of uh, addiction. Because I felt like the energy is celebrating. It's not like spirit is against spirit, alcohol altogether. It's just in, in moderation. And for what occasion are you under the influence you're the under the influence of what environment when you're drinking for me it's, it's something you do when you're celebrating okay let's have a drink to celebrate and you can't say that you're having a drink every single day like well i'm celebrating life every single day that's an addiction okay So I feel like the energy here of cut down, moderation. See, you see, I turn up with something. Okay, I've just missed quite a bit here, so let's go back. I can be medicine and I can be a parasite too. But all the time I'm showing you what is going on, what you need to change and whether the conditions are a little too steamy for you. If they are, you can freshen up your environment naturally. Don't clean or use harsh chemicals or bleaches, as you'll kill all that is helpful and good. It's taken to the energy of like vodka. Harsh. So don't clean or use harsh chemicals or bleaches, as you'll kill all that is helpful and good. You see, I turn up when something is unhealthy and you just aren't noticing or getting it. So be thankful for my presence and build a little algae or fungi pond in my honour. Or treat yourself to some tasty mushrooms. They are all healthy ways to honour me. And do not step thoughtlessly into that fairy ring. It's all about me being in the right place. Don't ignore me. Right now something really does need to be cleaned healthfully before it begins to affect you. I'm feeling all this association towards the liver. How that will build up over time and affect you, your liver. Okay, divination message. Think of ways to decrease stagnant moisture, stuck emotions, and increase airflow, fresh thinking in your home and environment. So when the mildew fairy comes to pay a visit, it's likely things are a little stagnant, a little over-emotional, and that fresh new air and thoughts need to be brought in to clear the situation up. She may mean a fresh way of thinking, or a fresh point of view, or a release of emotions that could be pulling in one area. Her appearance never means covering up, it means working with the environment you find yourself within. Like the mildew fairy said, a little of her can be medicine, and a great deal of her can be maddening. So when she turns up, so where she turns up will tell you lots about what needs a fresh and new approach in your life. And if she is inside lurking in cupboards or in the bathroom instead of decorating pebbles by a pond, you know that the presence of unhealthful energy needs to be undressed. Needs to be undressed. Needs to be addressed. Not rationalised and excused and never ignored. Something here about people lurking, drinking. Lurking in cupboards or in the bathroom. Okay. That's honestly the energy I felt like this was a bit of an alcoholic addiction. Okay, let's have a look at your um, Archangel animal. You have, you have the eagle. Seize opportunities courageously. And I feel here is that the divine really wants you to be clear-headed. Fresh thinking. Okay. Eagle. It's turned extremely cold. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. 
eagle. This is the card of the vis visionary <clears throat> who focuses with clarity and awareness on the objective. You are advised to be very clear about what you want to achieve or manifest. View it from the most enlightened perspective so that your intention is for the supreme good. Be watchful and aware of everything that is happening. Remain motivated so that when you are ready for action, you will move fearlessly and tenaciously. Treat challenges and seeming setbacks as opportunities to raise your game. Constantly remain calm, centred and serene no matter what you are presented with. When you do this, you will always stand in your power. People will see your majesty and will respect and honour you and your vision. Be aware of your own divine splendour. Okay. And stop dousing it with booze. That's what it feels like. Got a, got a little bit of a booze on our hands here. Okay. Romance angels. Attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. It's about learning to be in the present moment, learning to be with yourself, no matter what's going on. You being in control of your uh, reactions, responses, your own energy field. Okay. Like a good friend, the romance angel sends you this card to tell you the truth. The best way to have more romance in your life is through attraction rather than through strenuous effort. You are most attractive when you're fully enjoying yourself in the present. Your joyful laughter, self-expression and body language are beautiful. In contrast, any stress you experience as you strain to find romance pushes against the stream of life. Strain comes from a place of fear with an underlying worry. Maybe I won't receive this. That fear then attracts the very thing you worry about. Stress creates wrinkles, bodily tension, a constrictive voice and other unattractive characteristics. So go smell a rose and fully enjoy its fragrant beauty. Allow yourself simple pleasures that lead to great joy. Affirm frequently that you are loved and lovable. Visualise a wonderful romantic relationship with a great partner. Take excellent care of yourself and follow your inner guidance. Via the law of attraction, you'll draw romantic love to you through your own attractive nature. And there's nothing more uglier than a drunk, especially a feminine drunk. Should we leave it there? We'll leave it on that note. Okay, guys, um, there you have it. What's been keeping you awake at night? Okay, I will catch up with you guys soon. Until then, take care, much love. Bye for now.